Hello, fellow miners, and welcome to another episode from Spice Mines Gaming. I am enjoying another steak out here on my lawn, but um, not much longer. Because I'm going to get up, and we're going to go take care of some things today in this episode. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here. Oh, and yeah, it is Christmas Day today as I'm recording. And you can see that the chests have a, uh, a present theme. It's kind of neat looking. So let's come in here. Oop, I don't want that one. I want that one. And one of these furnaces has fully smelted cactus. So what I want to do is do a little mending on my, my pickaxe here. I have a full inventory because I have a, uh, a project planned for today. And let's see, I want a torch. There we go. Let's go ahead and pick this up. I'm not going to be able to hold on to it, so I'll just throw it down on the floor. But yeah, see there, I mended that pickaxe pretty well. All right, let's put this stuff back. And then there you go, it started started the next batch. So now i got to figure out where to put all of this. And I don't have another chest. Well, okay, well, let me sort this out really quick. I forgot I had to plan on dealing with this, but let me sort this out. I'll be right back. Okay, I got everything put away, and I'm piling up the uh, cactus screen. I've got to figure out something to do with that. I have something in mind, so, but I don't think it's going to be near the, uh, the volume to get rid of all of this, plus what I have in the shop. I'll have to figure something out. <laughs> if you have any ideas, let me know. I would really like to know how to legitimately use cactus screen. Other than throwing it in there. That works. <laughs> okay, so one thing I'm going to work on today, we're going to come down here. I've kind of dug this little area out here for future plans. We'll see what happens with that. But I've got something down here planned. What I want to do down here is I've dug out this really big room. I want to make like a general mob spawner down here. At least, at least I want to give it a shot. Oh yeah, I made. I was like, I hear this bubbling sound. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I made a water elevator. I was gonna do this on camera, but I uh, I actually got stuck and had to make this in order to get out. So I was gonna show that, but essentially what I did, and I'll go down there and show the bottom once we get going here with this. But um, I dug this hole straight down to the floor where the bottom of this that hole is right there, and I put a water source right here. Just take a bucket of water and just drop it right there against that block and it'll flow all the way down to the bottom of the shaft. Then you swim down to the bottom, plant kelp, and then just uh, start stacking kelp all the way up to the top and that makes water source blocks. Then you go back down to the bottom, then you mine the kelp and then replace the bottom block with, if you want to go up, soul sand, if you want to go down, a magma block. And there you go. You'll see the rest of it. It's it's a, There's a little bit more to more to it than that, but that's essentially it. But uh, I want to break through here. And let's get started with this. It's lit up here, so nothing's going to spawn in here. And I need to put trap doors down. And what these do is they're going to be open. They're not going to be closed, of course. But what they do is they kind of fool mob AI into thinking that there's a solid floor here. Let me get these placed here. Okay, open these up. And see, this little ledge right here is enough for a mob to think that there's there's a ledge there, and they'll just fall off, thinking that there's, there's something there that they could walk on. And then I'm going to put water down here, and it's going to flow down this hole here. So all these different mobs, so hopefully, I want to get... A lot of creepers and a lot of skeletons. So we'll see see if that works. If not, you know, if it does not work, it's no big deal. I can convert this into a storage room. It's easy to get to, and, you know, I can make something of it. But I'm going to give this an honest shot, see if I can get it to work. If not, no big deal. There's lots of room for storage, and believe me, I'm going to need storage very, very soon. Um, Emerald Emporium is in need in need, and I mean a dire need, of someone to get in there and do some construction work. 
And so, if I've got time this episode, we're gonna I'm gonna go over there and show you kind of what I have in mind for some builds in Emerald Emporium. We're gonna expand that thing because I have so many villagers in there, and they need more security. And by security, I mean doors. So we're gonna build a whole bunch of new villager houses and buildings and whatnot, meeting places, and that way Emerald Emporium. If any of the uh, players online decide to come check it out, which I hope they do. It's a really cool place. If they ever decide to come check it out, well, then it's a little more visually appealing than it is right now. Like, right now, it's it looks cool, but it's it's kind of bland. It's just a bunch of villagers running wild. So, yeah, now i got to place water. And, yeah, I'm going to need a place, too. I was thinking that. I'm going to have to go get more water, but that's okay. At least... You'll see kind of this is how it's going to be on each of these four spokes here. And so no matter where these monsters come and if they fall down in here, that water's going to carry them, push them over the edge, and they should drop way down in the bottom there. I got a bunch of hoppers down there, and it's just far enough that they'll die whenever they land. And then their basic drops, I'll get those. Like for creepers, if a creeper falls down there, I'll get my... Um, uh, gunpowder. If a skeleton falls, I should get bones. If a zombie falls, I'll get rotten flesh. If a spider falls, I'll only get string, if I'm not mistaken. I won't get spider eyes. I think spider eyes only drop if a player kills the spider. But uh, And also witches can even spawn down here, and that they can drop several things. So we'll just have to see how that works. But I am currently in need of more water. So I'm going to go get more water, fill this up, and then we'll uh, go from there. And there's the last bit of water dropped in there. So let me put these buckets away and get them out of the way. So I have all the water here. Everything's flowing down into here. Now, the positioning of this thing, uh, there's, uh, there is a strategy to positioning one of these things. You want to position it so that the player, whenever they AFK or they're doing something and they want to... Uh, get mobs to spawn here. The player has to be between 24 and 32 blocks away from this where at w any one of these walls. 24 to 32 blocks. And that's a spherical um, dimension. So it's up, down, left, right, forward, back, all that. 32 blocks. 24 to 32. So how I've positioned this, that hole right there is... Actually, I should... Not this hole, but these four blocks up here in the ceiling. This ceiling is 24 blocks below the floor of my house. And it's directly below. Like this block, that block, that block, and that block. Those four blocks make up the green rug in the center of my house. And this is just 24 blocks below those rugs. So now, that's 24. And so this is well within that 24 to 32 range. Now, that's significant because mobs will spawn and they'll hang around as long as a player is within that 24 to 32 range, which gives them enough time to wander around and fall down in here and, you know, perish. So, if I go further away than 32 blocks, then the mobs will start to despawn, which if they fall down there, then it doesn't matter. They're going to die before they despawn. But uh, if I go 32 blocks or more away, they'll start to despawn. And if I'm, I think it's 128 blocks away, they instantly despawn. And so it, at that point, I, I'm not going to matter. If I'm up in my house working, I'm going to want these things just kind of spawning at random, falling down in here so that I can come down here eventually and um, start collecting. So what I need to do here, I need to take up these torches because as far as I know, this room is technically done. So I don't, need to, I don't need to use this room anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to start taking up these torches. And that's going to make all of this spawnable in here. It's going to get dark. And I'm going to take up these as I go along. I'm be careful not to fall down there myself because whoop, I don't want to get stuck down there. It's not hard to get out. It's just it takes time. <laughs> and I don't want to fall. I wouldn't die, but I just don't want to fall. 
Okay. And if I drop a torch, it's no big deal. Okay. Alright, see, now that is definitely spawnable back up in there. Okay, so everything is clear. Okay, let's come in here. Replace these blocks. And I've got this carpet out here, so nothing will spawn here. But I'm going to go ahead and take these torches as well. And this one up here. I put a carpet here so nothing can spawn there. And hopefully, I don't think anything can spawn on stairs. But if I have a problem, I'll fix all that up. But uh, let's come down here. Ooh, there's one right there. No, I was missing one. Okay, so here we go. It's dark. And here are my elevators here. So let's go down. See, the, the bubbles are coming up. So that's the upside, and this is the downside. And we'll go down here and look at this collection chamber. Now, when you're going down these, you hold shift so you don't take damage when you hit the bottom. But, see, I've put these gates here to kind of hold back the water. You can go in and out freely. You can shut the gates if you want. No big deal. And same thing over here. These gates hold back the water from spilling out into here. But here I've got four hoppers, and they dump into these chests down here. So when the mobs fall down here, they're going to hit these hoppers, they're going to die, they're going to drop. I won't get any experience from it, which is okay. I'm not going to be... I've got the cactus farm for experience. I really don't need this for experience. And um, if I raise this up a block, say for instance I do want to start collecting experience from this. On top of these hoppers, all I have to do is put soul sand and then raise these up one more block. And then the mobs will drop just enough to where they'll stay alive and I can swipe them with a sword. Then they'll die. I'll gain experience and the drops. So it's versatile. I can work both ways. If this thing even works. If it doesn't work, then, you know, it's no big deal. I'll just convert. I'll just leave all this, convert that room to storage, and I still have a functioning room. Okay, so let's go back up. You know, I suppose I could hang around here for a little while, sort of AFK to see, well, not here, but up where I, I want to stand or whatever. AFK for a little while and just kind of see if anything spawns. And then we can go on to uh, the next part of this episode where we're going to go to Emerald Emporium and help some villagers out who are in need. But let me come up here and AFK for a little while and see what happens. It'd be kind of cool to catch some uh, catch some mobs on camera. Yeah, these four rugs right here, that that tube that goes down into those hoppers is directly below here. So I'm going to stand right here and see what happens. And I'll be back. Uh, I'll FK f here for a little while. Of course, you're not going to watch me AFK. That's incredibly boring. But I'm going to be here for a little while. Just kind of, I may do some tidying up of my inventory right here, or I may go take care of something around the house. Who knows? We'll see. But I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll see if any mobs spawn or if I've collected anything. Well, I've been up there for about 10 minutes, and it looks like I've made myself a nice little bat viewing area, if anything. <laughs> So I don't see any I don't see any sign of anything else in here, but I mean of course if anything's fallen in there then uh it'll be down there. But um yeah, I, after 10 minutes I don't see anything. Uh, I don't know if these bats affect anything, but I also might need to kind of dig around you know 20 blocks in all directions here just to make sure there are no caves because that will definitely affect this the spawn rate in here. If there are unlit caves in nearby, then this thing is kind of vying for attention with that. So there's competition there, and so I'll make it like a 50-50 rate here, or everything can go over there. So what I might have to do is dig around to see if I can find anything, but if anything, this is a cool little bat viewing area. <laughs> Not that that has any purpose or anything, but uh, let's go see if anything fell. I'm not hopeful. No, no, okay, well, it's worth a shot, but I'm not going to spend any more time on this now. I'll do some work, and we'll see what happens, but if anything, there's proof. Something did spawn in here. Bats. If only they were good for something, other than watching fly around. They can be entertaining around lava, because they just, they seem to be drawn to lava. I don't know why. There's always the squealing bat that kind of suicide flies into uh, lava. But anyhow, let's get on with the next part of the show. How about that? 
So we're going to head over to Emerald Emporium. And we're going to, I've already built a couple of houses and I'm going to, so you can see the design and I'll build a couple more on camera so you can see how I built it. And um, so we're going to expand the door count in Emerald Emporium to help the villagers be a little happier. So let's meet up over in Emerald Emporium. Here we are at Emerald Emporium. And let's take a look here. This is kind of the new build that I'm working on for villager huts. I'm, I kind of was you know, slightly inspired by the original building with the cobblestone. And there's cobblestone below here for the floor. Like that. Uh, I was inspired by... Let me find one that's already built. Like one of these over here. Kind of inspired by this, but I wanted to change it a little bit. Just kind of add my, little, my own little touch to it. And so after kind of playing around with some ideas, this is what I came up with. It's very simple. It's easy to make. I have that's a lot of noise going on here. <laughs> I have an abundance of cobblestone, so this is good to go. I, I, I like this. I really like the way this looks. It, it's simple. It fits a village look, and they're easy to make, and they suffice the purpose of making the villagers happy and giving them an extra door to go into at night. And so... This is what Emerald Emporium is going to look like. We're going to have several of these down here. Like I've got a plot here for one. I have a plot here for one. And then that one up there, I'm going to convert it into one of these. And then I don't have room over here. Um, I'm going to try to fit as many as I can into this area. I can fit one over here, I think. And then uh, one over there, if I expand the dirt just a little bit more that way, I could fit another one over here. If I remove these two trees, I should be able to fit another one over here. Maybe. We'll see. It, it might be a tight squeeze. And then it's possible even... Yeah, that may not work over here. I'll either be right up against that or right up against that. But it's possible. This road just really doesn't go anywhere. This is kind of going to be useless space here. But uh, it's possible I can fit something over here. And then, of course, there's room over there, too. And up here, maybe. We'll see. And then these big buildings, they become like nighttime communal areas. I mean, almost like nightclubs. <laughs> these things will be filled to the brim with villagers. And it's noisy. And so I would also like to tear these down and do something, you know, again, that's kind of inspired by the original building, but different. And, um, and put another building out here as well and then make like a main avenue down the center here that comes to this road all the way back up there, maybe bends over this way and goes back to the uh, that nether portal room over there. And then there's a couple of buildings up there on top of the mountain that I probably need to get up there and take those down as well. They're not serving any purpose and there's some, some decent wood up there that I could use for a better building down here. And you know, I could fit something down here. I could fit something back here. So there's plenty of room for more. And that's what I would like to do. I'd like to start adding more and more of these buildings so that these guys have more places to go into. And what also would be kind of neat is maybe with one of these big buildings, set up little stalls and maybe find a couple of villagers that have really good trades and try to influence them to go in there and put them in the stalls. And they could be like the, the official trading stalls. They've got the best trades, so they're like the, the, the highlighted villagers here. But let's go ahead and get started on this, and let's just build one of these things really quick so you can see kind of how I did it. The really simple design, but, you know, if you're interested, well, here you go. You want to take a, uh, a current village that you have and make it look better. Here's one way that you can do it. It's very simple. And so I'm going with the 5x5 five five design. It's an easy-to-work with design. Oop, that went too far. But luckily, I have Silk Touch there. Easily fixed. Let's go ahead and just clear this area out. And then I'm going to fill this in with slabs. I'm using slabs because three cobblestone blocks makes six slabs. And when you're doing something like this where you don't necessarily need the full block height, you can economize on your building materials by using slabs. So let's go ahead. There's the floor. And each of these is seven slabs tall, or three full blocks, and then a slab on top. 
But again, I can economize by having that um, extra slab there on top, and I won't be using full blocks. There's seven. There's seven. There's that. There's seven. So there's the four corners. And then I have these upside down stairs along the top block. So let me dig those out. And we may have a, a curious villager or two come over and kind of check out what we're doing. They tend to get really curious around here. I don't blame them. They're probably thinking, hey, that was my house. Or, what's this new thing? I know I'm giving them more personality and life than they really have, but it's kind of fun to imagine what an actual villager might think. <laughs> Okay, so let's go with these slabs. Again, I'm going to use slabs. Even though I could use full blocks, it won't matter here. But in certain places, like on the roof where I have a single slab, it'll help in uh, reducing materials. So let's see, what did I do here? I went up one more. Like that. Let's go ahead and put the door in. And then, so there's the front. I didn't really have to use the door, but I just did. <laughs> okay, let's put a layer down all the way around. And then we need some glass. And then back to the slabs. All right, there's the walls. Now we're ready. Put up the torches. Actually, I forgot to put torches inside these houses. So let's go ahead and just put one right there. That should be should be enough to light it up. Oh yeah, easy. Okay, one torch should be good. And all of these houses along here, they're going to be identical. And on some of them, I might put a variation. Like I might move the door over a block and then put a window over here. Something like that. Do some simple variations. Or maybe on another one, put a window on this side, a window on this side, and then just make this solid wood up here. We'll see what kind of happens and what I've got to work with and just what I decide to do. And then another thing I did is right here. Let me go ahead and fill that in. Put a little slab porch here. I hear a zombie. He died. Alright, now I think I'm ready to hop up and get started on the roof here. Uh, I'll need to get rid of that for now. Okay, and the roof is pretty simple. While well, I have the wood slabs, let's go ahead and put these in place. And then I'm going to need a little more dirt. Let's just go ahead and do this. The dirt only helps me put these logs in place to get them oriented properly for that center beam that goes across the roof here. There's that. I'm going to need slabs and stairs for the next part. So I'm come over here and the stairs go... Whoops, not hitting the right button. There we go. And then I fill in this with slabs. And that completes the roof. Very simple. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. And let's put the torches up. And see, I put one inside? Yes, good. 
There, now the villagers have one more house and one more door to go in at night. And we are have ourselves the beginnings of a main street. So I'm going to go ahead and build this one really quick, and then we'll come. B I'll come back, and then you'll see the progress that I've made up to that point. Okay, here we have it. Main Street has now been updated in Emerald Emporium, and here I added this little feature here just to give the builds a little more depth. You have depth down here and depth above. Kind of looks like they've got a little bit of a uh, a porch covering here. And uh, also what I would like to do is right here on these corners add some uh, leaf blocks. That would give them a little more color and a little more character. Uh, I could do leaf blocks or I can do like two tall flowers like maybe roses or uh, sunflowers. Something to that effect. I could do um, maybe on some of these I could do like a, a dirt patch with um, trap doors around it and then put like a flower on top of that, make like a planter. So there's there's a lot of versatility with this design and for decorating just to make each of them look just a little bit different than the rest. Because you know, you, you get that in real life where you have like a, a, a build scheme in a neighborhood or whatever and the houses generally look the same but everyone has one little subtle detail that's just a little different, just kind of sets them apart from the rest. That's kind of what I want to do here. And speaking of adjustments to the build design uh, over here I built one more and as you can see here's with that variation where you have the door to the side and then the window I kinda like this design a lot too and uh, with this configuration it looks really good and the sides are the same I might do an experiment where I have a, a window on both sides it would be kinda neat looking but I really like the way this looks and as you can see those villagers are really happy they have more doors and some of them are still just kind of hanging around outside, even though it's getting dark out here. But, um, but yeah, that's, this is working out quite well. So I will definitely be expanding this. And if, let's see if this one, I think this is the building they all really like to go to. Let's take a peek in. Yeah, this is, this is a small number. And here they come. They're coming in. This is like the nightlife for the villagers here. <laughs> You know, they may need some more torches in here really quick before I tear the place down, but that's okay. I can I can collect the torches when I build. But I need to get out of here before zombies and stuff start spawn spawning in here, so um, I'm going to head off back to the house. Well, that was a good episode, in my opinion, and here comes a zombie. Let me take care of this guy. Any more? There's a chicken. <laughs> okay, that should be all of them. Was not expecting him to be there, but I guess it's logical that he would be there since it was night time just a moment ago. All right, let's try this again. It's time to wrap up this episode. I think this was a pretty good episode, and uh, we got to see some some little bit of progress here and there. I tried this mob spawner. I'm gonna keep working at that just to see if I can get anything out of that. Like I said, if not, I'll just make it into a storage room. No big deal. And uh, made some good progress on Emerald Emporium. That was needed. I need to get over there and make that place look really nice. And uh, so I'm going to continue to work on that. And hopefully I can come up with a really good large community building design there in there so that the most of the villagers can go in there. Maybe I can work on some kind of... Uh, like a trading post in there as well. I mean, the whole thing's a trading post, but, you know, like a specific trade building with all the good trades. And expand that thing a little bit, and who knows, maybe even move fences and build more. But uh, it's time to end this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please tap or click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Goodbye.